Hi, welcome back to Wild Speculations. I'm Daniel. I'm Scott. This week we talk about Critical Role Campaign 2, Episode 67, Beyond the Eyes of Angels. Yes. So, right before we went live, I just had a thought. Okay. Will the next episode be The Sacrifice of Angels? Hmm. Maybe. As an episode title, I mean. I guess we're going to have to wait and see what they do. Because Matt's even said he doesn't name the title until he doesn't title them until afterwards. Right. Yeah. And because he, he'll have a couple ideas in mind and then depending on what they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to touch on that's independent of the episode technically. Okay. But they sort of all caught on to the idea of doing all monks. Yeah. Um, I kind of hope that happens, or even any, uh, all of one class hmm. kind of thing. It could be interesting. Um, I think monks, clerics, and probably warlocks are the most varied. Bard. Bard, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I can see a whole table, that, that whole table breaking down to some. <laughs> then uh, they have to do a musical episode. <laughs> if, they, if they're going to do one, that's how to do it, for sure, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, the first encounter coming out after they ask chat is not still invisible. Yeah. Uh, which I love the start of. Mm -hmm. I think uh, yeah. I can do foreshadowing a little bit. Yeah, you're pretty good at it. I, I have yet I don't think I've quite hit the stride that Matt was able to hit. Yeah. With building the terror yeah. in the players. Um as he did in that opening scene. Um, and yeah, I have gotten that spider response once. Uh, I would say a third of the time though, my spider encounters, uh, at least one player gets excited. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, was not a beast. Nope. Uh, I swear I have seen that art somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I don't know where. And I was trying to think what I... Like, I'm almost positive I have read that spider's stat block. But I huh. can't for the life of me think of where it was. Or even when. Yeah. And I'm not sure. Like, we talked a little before. And the only spider type creature that I know of is from 3 5 Pathfinder and isn't official 5th edition yet. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking of Shape Changer Demon that is in 5th edition. Um, but that doesn't, even, I don't know, that, that's a lot of that because it was a mama and babies, you know. So that yeah. kind of was what ruled that out for me. Yeah, same. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's, it, well, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's definitely, but I'm pretty sure it is uh, it is Abyssal or Hell. Yeah. Hell or Spider. Yeah. Um, I'll have to check Morning Cannons so again. Um, but yeah, we didn't, I mean, this is all sort of moot because it, it got one thing that it did, which is... Pull them in, try to sting them. We didn't even get to see how much damage it did. Right. Um, and not kill it. Yeah. Uh, which was great. And it's my favorite. Crit on a sneak attack. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> you can tell Liam was vicariously living through yes. Sam. Uh, 
uh, as he often does when Sam does the roguish things. Uh, yeah, critting on sneak attack. Yeah. So, and then the the DC twenty of the webs. I was like, dang, because not didn't see them with a nineteen, yeah. and Bo did with a twenty. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, that's not, super high. Not the orphan maker. Uh, yeah, probably one of my yeah favorite in character interactions. I think was that moment between not and you Yasha. Have it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm especially just because the thing. I'm the orphan maker and I'm not the orphan maker. <laughs> yeah. Um, because that's going to come into play. And yeah. Yasha, I think... I don't think she wants them to really... Latch on to that. Yeah, or discover why. Yeah. Uh, and I well, don't think she wants to discover yeah, why. Yeah, I was going to say, as, I, don't as think, I, I think she doesn't want to discover why. Yeah. She's afraid of... Uh, I don't think it's so much that she doesn't... That it's... I don't want you to know. It's like, I don't want to find out. And if none of us find out, then I don't. Because I think they're at a point where she's opened up to him enough that she knows they wouldn't, like, desert her or, you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's more of a fear of them finding out, but that it doesn't want to, it, she doesn't want it to get back to her. She doesn't want to know. Right. Yeah, I don't think is is the main thing. I think she acknowledges that she's missing time, but I think she doesn't want to know. Yes. In much the same way that Molly didn't want to know. Yeah. It's like, I don't care. Um, where I think Yasha has some inkling mm -hmm. of that person before, because she remembers before. She just has that gap of missing time. Yeah. Where Molly didn't have any memory of his previous mm -hmm. life. And Molly was like, that was somebody else. Yeah. You know, I'm writing my own story now. Um, so, yeah. Um, we also, inadvertently, and they just barely touched on it, found out that Ford's a one pump chump. Oh, same on uh, one action. Yeah, yeah when he's like, I'm gonna fuck, fuck it. You are? That's an action. So if it's only six seconds, <laughs> I'm sorry, Ford, but. <laughs> That's canon. You're a one pump jump. It's not even an extended action. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think my single favorite line was I did not think that was going to happen. Me either. Me either. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> uh, and if you've DM'd, you've all, we've all had that moment where it's yes. like. All right, we're in, this is you've got this you, you complex this mechanics great and it's seen and you've described it and players. I do this, bang, bang, bang. Either they do something that completely negates what you had planned. You're like, oh shit, I didn't even think about that. Or they get a crit or a series of crits yeah. that take out the monster before it gets another turn. And it's just like, oh well, that was wasted prep. <laughs> I mean, it's not wasted yeah. prep, but that's how you feel in the moment. In the moment, yeah. It's like, well, uh, well, I guess it's more of, well, I was expecting this to take, you know, 15 minutes at least, and it took three. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have something else after this? Yeah. Uh, Especially if it's near the end of what you had <laughs> planned for the night. Like, okay, yeah. this will take up the last half hour of the night. Oh shit, I still got 25 minutes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, a couple interesting things happened after that fight. Yes. Uh, oh. Barbarian Sentinel mm -hmm. at player advice. Uh... She should have used the dodge action. Mm. Because getting right there, she uses the dodge action. So anything that comes at her is going to have disadvantage. Right. 
which is going to be the only turn in the combat that that's going to happen. Realistically, if you're going to reckless attack. Right. But it allows you to focus on your sentinel reaction yeah. attack. Where readying your action, which uses your reaction, you know. runs counter to the sentinel yes. procking. Um, if you don't have sentinel, then that doesn't matter. Run in, ready your attack action. That's yeah. fine. But as a sentinel, mm -hmm. moving in, taking the dodge action, yeah. means that if that thing tries to get by you, bang, its speed is zero. Yeah. And because you want all of them to come at you. Yeah. So you want to capture the one that tries to get by you. Yeah. I think that's why I don't usually play a character with that beat, because I'm not that type of fighter when I play. Yeah. I very rarely play that upfront tank type. Yeah. Where our near is. Yes, your character and, is. Uh, last night, uh, our fighter ran up. And he, I could tell he was mulling it over, mm -hmm. whether to ready. And he's not even a sentinel, but he has a, he has a, he's the twenty AC mm -hmm. character in the group. Right. And I could tell he was mulling it over, and he, and I was like, uh, maybe take the dodge action. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's... And and for him, twenty AC creatures yeah. got disadvantage. Yeah. To hit that, uh, yeah, yeah, you're 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 good there. Um, and actually, last session was an interesting session for Ashley because things were missing her, yeah, even without her bracers of defense, yeah, and and even with advantage in some cases, and she rolled over twenty. In all three encounters, for yeah. her initiative. Yeah. Um, just. True. So yeah, and I think she was loving it because when you're a fighter or a barbarian, when your tank mm -hmm. gets the initiative, it I think that makes the encounter easier. Yes, definitely, because the the tank can get up there and draw get in position. All those, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. And then we have Taliesin, of course. Uh, Taliesin likes to egg the players into, I don't want to say bad decisions, but fun decisions. And in, oh, hey, Caleb, you're a spider. Go into those holes. Oh. You know, split the party for no, no bad idea. You know, but that's not the, you know, he, he's the experienced player. He's the one with the most experience, you know. He's played the longest beforehand. And yeah, that's true. He he enjoys bringing those moments out. I think. Um. Yeah. Well, I think he, much like Matt, uh, he doesn't want people doing the super conservative thing. Yeah. Uh, he wants them to be willing to go out and do stuff, yeah. try stuff. Uh, which I loved them with not. See how good you're doing? You're not even drinking. And Sam turned it around on him. <laughs> I, I, missed, even I aiming. was aiming at someone else. <laughs> Which reminds me of Firefly, when Jane got drugged up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he shot the gun. And he's like, nice shot. And he like wing, he shot the gun out of his hand or winged him or something, but didn't kill him. And he's like, I was aiming for his head. <laughs> Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, but they find a key yes. to the door yes. or gate, actually, that was in that room. Yeah, a lot of a lot of keys right at the doorway in this episode. Yeah. Um. Which they didn't try. Well, I don't. It didn't seem like there was going to be much left of the body for them to really mm -hmm. investigate what it was. Uh, and my, if my memory is correct of Matt's description, there wasn't yeah. much of anything. But they had that key, which makes me wonder... So, 
The, this is the the keys being right there is an argument against the theory I have about Oban, and you know he he's being portrayed as yeah I, I'm here I'm waiting for you guys, but that's a lot of nope that the seven of them went through, and he's presumably by himself. So my theory is he's actually behind them. And letting them clear out the thing. Yes, that, that, yeah. My house also had that thought. Because she keeps scrying on things that were part of a disguise that didn't actually exist. And so she's got no clue where he is. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, and I was going to talk, I was gonna, I was going to talk more about that near the end when we were talking about yeah, what's coming up. Yeah, and that's on my no but yes, at the end. But uh, since we brought it up, I'm like, oh well, if he had left the keys for them, that'd be one argument for him being ahead. But yeah, um, but the other interesting thing was the Z-shaped key. Yeah, um, which opened the box with the scroll of protection. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was trying to, I was like, what is that? Me. Who is Z? Zuala. It's about the only Z name we've got in this campaign. Yeah. And see, my what I where my brain went was a servant of the wizard who made the happy fun time ball. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. And the reason I say that is because that scroll, mm -hmm. in theory, is older than the key. Because the key they found in the room, mm -hmm. that they found in the spider's den. Yes. Um, so. Or, I'm wrong, and... The den back there was dug after, which is also a possibility. Yeah. Um, and they didn't do enough investigation of that room to ascertain its original function. Yeah. Because uh, that's the uh, that's the thing. I was like, what was that room for? Because it's not really an antechamber. No. Like, it's not really the entrance. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they didn't bother really, they didn't RP or go through mechanically clearing the webs to mm -hmm. inspect the pillars or any of the walls right. or anything. Um, so that's where I'm like, we're missing data! <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> uh, I think if they had, they may have had some inkling of the shaft. Mm -hmm. uh, which was immediately after. Yes. Um, do you think that is the Stormlord's protection? No. No? Okay. No. Because I, I started. I didn't get that vibe at all. I started trying to think about the the story of the tomb. Okay. Uh, and that each room has a function. Uh, and a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I was so frustrated that they didn't, they didn't investigate that room for mark writing or anything. Um, and the, the shaft was such that they couldn't really. Yeah. Because um, they just they couldn't see. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But that box with the Z-lock, um, I have a feeling we will run across that again. Okay, uh, I buy that. Or it's just a chair. <laughs> and it's just, Matt was like, I want something interesting about this box. What's interesting about the box? 
Uh, it's got a weird shape lock. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not a big it's a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to leave it out there that it's possible that I'm reading way too much into that. And I'm reading way too much into it because they didn't read anything on the walls. Yeah. Um, but we have, the, we have the shaft, the stairwell. Yes. Do you think Matt was too kind on that? Yes. Okay. Me too. Uh, because if I, because Travis is up front, and he specifically says, I want to look at the roof. Now, that shaft looked to be about 30 feet across. Yeah. Which would indicate if the shaft is directly under the back of that hallway. Mm hmm that for Ford's dark vision to see, which we later learn has been truncated, he would have to be stepping into that. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I say Matt was a little kind. Yeah. In that instance where he, he sort of gave him, yeah, there's nothing above, above it, but he made not make the dex check when she was near the back. Yeah. For trying to use her ring of water walk on the mist. Yeah. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, yes. It would have only caught one of them at best going down that shaft. Um, yeah. But. Now, my, my question with this shaft is. Yeah. So, in. What I would have done, especially with both Caleb and Not, we know have the spell. Everybody jump, last second, feather fall on the group. I was yelling that at the TV. Okay, I'm not the only one then. <laughs> uh, and I have a theory why it didn't happen. Okay. One, Caleb did not prepare the spell that day. Okay. So that's why Caleb didn't do it. And why not didn't do it okay. is because she is suspicious of everyone in the group. Okay. I can, I can buy that. And, and I can is no longer interested in Since that. they were, no, they were going down into a tomb, I can see definitely Caleb not preparing that spell. Yeah. Yeah. But not would have because it's yeah. a known spell. It's a known spell. Um, but yeah, I, I think she didn't recommend it because she doesn't trust anyone. Okay. Um, so you think it was an in-character choice and not Sam just not realizing? I... So... I think it's possible Sam did not realize. I admit that. That that was my thought. Is Sam just didn't think of it in the moment? Uh, and I yeah, and I'm definitely putting. Uh, Although I, I I feel like that's a flimsy reason at best. Yeah. Because he proved with Scanlan that he is very adept at pulling the right spell at the right time. Yeah. Um, especially for as new as a player as he is. Yeah. Uh, the argument that I can see that Sam considered it, but then discounted it, is we don't know how deep that is, one. Two, we don't know what's at the bottom of it. Yeah. Uh, feather falling does you no good if you fall into lava at the bottom. <laughs> if you land on lava. This is true. Uh, so I can kind of see them not doing that. But my initial thing was, you know, that they set the trap, they trigger the trap, Matt brings out the thing, shoom, it's jump. Yeah. It's jump. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom of this, because that's the way out. You've got at least one person with feather fall, you've got at least one person with slow fall, you've got two people with polymorph that can turn into something flying. Yeah, and that was, this, that was the saddest part to me, is that... 
they use two fourth level spells yeah. and a first level would have done the job. Yeah. You get you get a uh, guy who can misty step, which that's an interesting thought. And I wanted to talk about Ford's misty step. Because we've had this discussion because I've had players I've had characters that have wanted to do that kind of thing and it's been ruled against in our games uh, by two different DMs, yourself included. Yeah. Um, and go ahead and give your argument as to why it doesn't. And now I'm not arguing that I should have been able to do it. DM said it. Fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, well, I believe I specifically ruled that it would not mitigate the falling damage. Yes. Um, that you could have misty stepped. Yes. But that it wouldn't have saved you from much damage. Yes. Uh, which was for, is what Ford was trying to do. And so there was, was a what he was allowed to do. Yes. And there's there was two problems with that okay. whole section. One is uh, mechanics driven, and the other one is physics driven, okay. which has little bearing on Magic. necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So the first is, Travis was saved by Matt's memory hole, okay. or not necessarily memory hole, it's the wrong term, but it happens when, and it happens to me, uh, you have to look up a rule, mm -hmm. and you looked it up last week, and it, that the exception that you had to look up has supplanted the general rule. Yeah. Because Matt made him falling at feather fall speeds. Mm -hmm. At 60 feet around. Yes. Rather than 500. Yes. Which is the actual fall speed when you fall. Yes. So, uh, so that's point one okay. in Travis's favor. Uh, and actually, I, I was watching quite a bit in this episode, because at one point I was like, I, you notice all of these uh, mechanical errors, or uh, where you know the player has an ability and they don't use it. Yeah. And I started sort of tallying them up, mm -hmm. and again, as I pointed out many weeks ago, it basically comes out as a wash. Yeah. Because there are times that Matt could, should, what, however you want to word that, yeah. do things differently that is against the players. But there's also just as many times, it seems, that the players don't do everything they could yeah. against Matt's monsters. Yeah. Um, but in this case, in the fall, Misty Step. Conservation of momentum. It's one of the primary problems in physics that usually movies ignore. Yeah. Um, whether that be for the cool bang, the person flies 30 feet from, you know, the shotgun blast, or yeah, uh, the hero just stands there as, you know, shotgun blast hit them. Um, when you, if you fall and misty step, because there's also the question, can you, the spellcaster, control what direction you come out? Yes. Um, and in a falling situation, if you wanted to, to mitigate your fall, is you would teleport, fall, teleport up. So that you're showing up. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, and when I initially tried it and I read the spell, I'm like, so if I'm here and then I'm here, like, I'm, I'm seeing it. And I think it's how Matt interpreted it, where it arrests the fall, and you're just appearing there. Because hmm. otherwise, when they do their move and Misty Step, why aren't they continually going forward? For the same reason you don't count. If you move last turn, you must move this turn. So. Uh, it's because we have artificially segmented time yes. into six second blocks um, because it really if you think about it everything that happens in one turn 
is happening at the same time. Yes. Uh, so, it, it realistically, it's not, I wait for that person to do this thing, unless you specifically state that. Right. It's more of, bang, bang, you know, we're all choosing targets and we're all fired. Right. Um, if there was a way to do that simultaneously while maintaining order and accuracy, that would be the best right. uh, representation of combat. It doesn't really work. It breaks down inevitably. Yes. Um, without the aid of a computer, probably, I don't think it can be done. Mm -hmm. You could probably do same time turns on something like Fantasy Grounds or... Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you'd basically all have to put in your decision of what you're going to do that turn and then let it play out yeah. together. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, but yeah, that's, but that's not, so that's why I, but basically the spell doesn't say yes or no to right. you can do this. And so you guys have ruled that you would still be falling at the same speed. You'd just be already on the ground. Right. Uh, or you, you could change your vertical motion into horizontal motion. Right. But that's just going to put you into a wall. Yes. <laughs> See. Uh, but, and it's because you're using it in that situation mm -hmm. that you build up such velocity. That's why. And it's so, it's uncontrolled. Whereas if you are walking in the misty step, yeah, it's the same as if you had just taken another step. Um, I mean, I, I get your argument. Um... My would, mind still wants to be like magic, you know. It's a it's a way to mitigate the thing. Um, yeah. I think I would probably give advantage on the acrobatics check, um, or have the falling damage, just because if you did angle it up, you would go up and then come back down, but you wouldn't go as far. Yeah. Um. So and, and having you also it lose some momentum, right? And having it is probably even kinder than the acrobatics check to reduce it by a d6. Yeah. In the case of a long fall. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Now, if you have the ability to misty step and you're a monk, then you're good. Or shadow shoot, step. You shoot the bat the way up and then you yeah. slow fall down a height within your range. Yep. Which is a, what a shadow monk can do yes. with shadow step. Uh, yeah. But, regardless. Yeah. Um, they mentioned the Goonies. Yes. Um, yes. And... Oh. Ford says... Because when Bo abandons him mm -hmm. for Caleb, he got kind of upset. When earlier he's like, catch that wizard. And she's like, you got friends? He's like, well, one of them's not even real. Yeah. And Laura sort of was like, what? Uh, which made me think of you and that Jester's delusional. Mm, yeah. Does Jester view her duplicate as the traveler? Maybe. That when she manifests her duplicate, that is the traveler? Maybe. She could. Uh, or is it yeah. a version of herself that, she, but that is just as real? Like a Thomas Riker type thing? Yeah. Yeah. That could be. Uh, so uh, I don't think we'll, we will get that confrontation. Not for a while, anyway, if we yeah. ever do. Yeah. But it was an interesting... And it was, it was an aside. It's quiet. Mm -hmm. If you're not watching for it or you know rewatch it like we do uh right. you'll miss it uh but i did want to give you props on that yeah thank you um and then they were talking to goonies yes and yeah yeah and she's like jester you play piano which casts her as andy and caleb tells ford to do the truffle shuffle <laughs> yeah although i see ford more as brand than chunk the older brother. Uh, 
the pseudo athlete, the pseudo jock wants to be cooler than he is. No, I think I think Chunk was the right fit, actually. Okay. Uh, he wants to be the leader, or could be the lead. He's the one of the more charismatic of the kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm talks his way and is uses his charm to talk his way out of stuff, which is exactly what Chunk yeah. does. That. Yeah. Um. And that that got me thinking. Of course, not would be mouth. Oh yeah. Now, if Molly was still here, Molly would be mouth, and not would become data. With the alchemy. Okay. But in the group we have, not in his mouth. Uh, Bo is Mikey, I think. Yeah. Yasha would be Steph. The short-haired blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always angry. Yeah. Uh, Caleb would be Data. Yeah. The I think... Mutation. Yeah. And the, which leaves Caduceus a slot. The big goofy looking one. Yeah. Who's best friends with Chung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and came to the rescue. <laughs> yeah. That, that fits. Um, so yeah. There, there's your Goonies Mighty Night style. Uh, now let's see some fan art. <laughs> all right. Uh. We also had, uh, it's more out of character than in character, but I still want to count it as a Widow Jest moment. Okay. But when they're joking about when Caleb, when Liam makes the motion of crawling into the thing, mm -hmm. he does like this, which Laura considered to be a lewd yes. gesture. And then he says, here, give me yours, and he reaches over for her. And I was like, "Little just," but it's not really. But no. Um, <laughs> at the bottom of this of the stairwell, you have a Skyrim style trap. Mm. So in Skyrim, there's lots of places, little tombs and stuff, where lightning or fire or cold blast at you. And there's a little soul gem, the crystal. That if you knock it off the pedestal, you know, with your bow or some distance yeah. weapon. So Bo takes the little crystal out of its holder and the trap shuts down. Yeah. And I loved Matt adding the Eldritch Blast damage. Yes. Yes. That was amazing. I loved that. Uh, any, any magical damage going into it is redirected. Yeah. I, I don't know... If in the moment you want to tell your players that, but I love that Matt did it for us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that we would know. Fifteen uh, plus the seven from the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, narratively, it's six of one, half dozen of another because he shot it. It's more powerful. You could put that together, but also Bo was right there. By, by that point, so she could have seen it glow brighter just yeah. before release. Uh, so, but yeah, that was funny. Uh, and they used that to get out of that room. Yep, because that's the key yep. in the room with the door that it unlocks. Yeah. Do, some of the stuff was very, reminded me of his one shot with Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Where... He was he Colbert was like, oh, well that's going to be important later, when he gives him a scroll of uh, resistance or something, yeah. uh, and uh, he gave them a scroll of resistance and the next room's lightning damage. Uh, but that's when they go into the body pit room. Yes. Um, and which was an interesting puzzle for them to solve. And they had some confusion about the mechanics that was operating that encounter. Mm -hmm. And because Matt forgot that Yasha does radiant damage, mm -hmm. and Ashley never segregates yeah. her radiant dice, uh, and she hasn't since she got the magic weapon. Right. Um, 
uh, well, she Which, hasn't had just, to. Just a player note, I've personally always found it useful. I always segregate my different types of damage. Yeah. I had one character that was, uh, he had a ham, a maul, but it did plus, I think, lightning damage, and he was a blood hunter, so he could add fire damage, and then he was the ASMR, so he could add necrotic damage. Yeah. So I was like, it's this bludgeoning, this electric, this fire, and this. Yeah. And, and Yasha can that, do that. That got insane quickly. Yeah, it did. Um, but yeah, uh, and Yasha can do so the same thing, because Fallen, she does necrotic. Right. And Matt confused, they got confused in that moment, where he's like, well your Fallen's would be necrotic, but that has nothing to do with the Zealot, the zealot damage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we will probably get that cleared up. Yeah. This week. Um, especially if she pops her wings. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Uh, we have the... So, my... My interpretation of the mechanics that Matt was showing in that encounter okay. was he gave them, uh, what's it called, uh, Undead Endurance or something like that? The undead Resilience. Resilience, yes. Where they save unless it's a crit or Radiant, radiant. Damage. Mm -hmm. I think he gave them that regardless, but if it was Radiant Damage and they failed the save by five or more, mm -hmm. they would drop this mode. Okay. And that's why when they were like, well, what about, you know, the destroy undead? Because uh, Matt doesn't say all of them down there drop one. He says several of them do. Yeah. And that's because he just, well, he just picked up a bunch of D20s and rolled them uh, for each side. Yeah. Uh, it was like 10 of them. It was three on one side and seven on the other. Yeah. Um, so I think that was the mechanic okay. that Matt was using. Every all of them got, and I think he was limiting it to one per round. Okay, but there's other evidence that's to suggest that that's also not the case. Um, when he when he describes all of them down below doing it, mm -hmm. but everything up top, from what I could tell. They only ever drop one per round. Okay. Um, and I think that was a clever encounter design choice okay. from Matt's perspective to ensure that this went three rounds. Gotcha. Because, yeah, they have stuff that it, one quarter to challenge rating. To ensure that it's not another uh, mama spider. Well, I think for that encounter... I think he wanted to stress the potential of being overrun. Yeah. Um, I think I don't. I think he forgot that Jester could turn undead. Yeah. Because uh, he was surprised when she did it. Yeah. Uh, and even her pulling out spirit guardians shocked Caduceus. Yeah. Because um, she hasn't done it in a very long time. Mm hmm. Uh. So, what was with the Hearts of Gold? That one had me stumped. So, I have a theory about that room, and that gets into okay. the theory. Uh, and I haven't done a lot of my own primary source, as it were, research onto it, but that scene, the pits of the pit of bodies, mm -hmm. reminded me of a scene from. Uh, dice camera action okay. that took place in the Shadowfell. Mm. And one of the ways to get to the Shadowfell was through essentially this collection pit okay. of bodies uh, of the dead. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's basically what that was. And all of the evidence that we were given earlier in the episode like even daylight is diminished by half. Yeah. The darkness is thick. You can't yeah. see through it. 
Uh, yeah, when they were doing that half thing, I was thinking, yeah, I was wondering about the shadow fell. And, yeah. So I think these few first few rooms uh, were connected to the shadow fell, which I think is significant in regards to Loth mm -hmm. and the chain to oblivion. Okay. And why Loth went crazy or is said to have gone crazy. Mm. And drove all of the drow on Exandria mm -hmm. or in Taldore crazy. Right. And these drow didn't because they moved away from Loth. Uh, and we got another glimpse, uh, a tease, that the boss of this, well, one of the potential bosses of this uh, tomb is going to be Yanagra. Mm -hmm. With the laughter at the bridge, yeah. After the corpse room, yeah. Um, and so I, that got me thinking: if everything has been sort of Shadowfell, and this bridge, build every bridge, mm -hmm. eat every. So I think they've gone through the Shadowfell every nightmare. They've gone through the Shadowfell portion. And now they're about to go into the abyss. This chain bridge across the, a deep darkness. So do you think they need to ingest those hearts to make it across the chasm? No, those hearts were used up to open the room. Hmm. Uh, I think Matt has another mechanic in, at, at play, and he teased it in this episode. Okay. And that is... Uh, this is a big, heavy, metal bridge. It's yeah, chains. chain bridge. Chains are loud. Yeah. So I think it's going to be stealth checks to cross the bridge. Okay. Um, and if they fail the stealth checks, and I don't know if, if Matt is going to let it be a group check, were well, be the, stealth checks with disadvantage on the chain bridge, I would think. That's possible. Um, and I, I don't know if a single failure is enough to trigger the thing, or if it will take... If a ball bearing is enough to trigger it. Yeah, well, that's why, that's why, I, that's why I wonder if it's going to be... Uh, a single failure is enough to trigger the effect to make everybody make a wisdom save. See, I, what I think it's going to be... Cause, okay, so we saw the ball bearing go, and it just hit Bo. We see not talk. And every... You know... And more people. So I think the volume... So I think if one person... Just one person fails that round, they'll be the only ones. But if more than one person fails, everybody makes the save. Okay. I can see that. Um, so, pass without a trace then? Uh, it's a domain spell for Jester. Yes, it is. But only after they fail the first time. Okay. Because I don't think Matt tips that hand tips that off yeah. until they're on the bridge. So I was thinking that. I was thinking... Uh, Possibly silence, but technically silence has to be rooted at a point, and it's not mobile. Right. However, we do have precedence in Exandria because Percy had built into his glove a silence spell that fought, went with the glove, so it moved with him. Hmm. And then, do they send Bird Frumpkin out first to fly across and see what's going on through... Caleb's eyes. Or Caleb see what's going on in Frumpkin's eyes. Yes. And if... So, he sees and hears through Frumpkin. And if Frumpkin triggers that somehow, does Caleb go mad? Hmm. Because I, ideally, they'll be back in the room previous so as not to trigger it. As they send Frumpkin out. I 
I think he makes Caleb make a save with advantage. Okay. Um, at least that's probably how I would do it. Uh, and like Frumpkin would have to make one, and Caleb would make one, but at advantage. So if Frumpkin fails, Frumpkin's confused. Mm. Uh, and Caleb could succeed. But if Caleb fails, if they both fail, then Frumpkin is confused, Caleb's confused, and he rolls the D8 to see what they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Nicer than me, I would have just made him make it. <laughs> You're seeing well, and hearing is if you're there, according to the fine familiar, yeah. I'd be like, you make it. That's how I would rule it. I can see both ways. And again, I think... And I can too. And, I, and in large part, it depends on what the other mechanics underlying that challenge are. Yeah. And how strict he's going to be with every, everything else and everyone else. Yeah. Um, where just the slightest sound and everybody has to... Then, yes, he makes it just like from Um But, yeah. The question that I have regarding that crossing is... Are they going to be attacked on the bridge? Hmm. And I think the answer is yes. Because he had them being attacked in the shaft by an invisible stalker. If, um, yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, um, you think it'll be the same? No. I actually think it will be uh, a shadow demon. Okay. Um, which I think are CR f five or seven. They're somewhere in that range. Five to eight. Okay. Um, so two of them would be dangerous. Yeah. Especially if the combat triggers confusion. Yeah. In everybody. Um, or, or one would be dangerous with confusion running rampant through the party. Right. Um, but two would be especially dangerous. Yeah. Um, if Matt wants to do a another swarm encounter, similar mm -hmm. to the zombies, then probably shadows. Okay. Um, and that would especially mess with Yasha Ford, just because Travis is sensitive about his strength. His strength score. Yes. Uh, and also, arguably, Ford is one of the more dangerous people to that for that to work for that to happen to. Yeah, uh, Ford, Bo, and Caleb all have uh, 10, 11, and twelve strength. So three hits from shadows, they're likely going to be coming back a shadow. Uh, and hitting Yasha with it, or even Jester. Uh, also will put the fear of God in them. Yeah. Because, I mean, Jester doesn't rely on her strength. Well, not strength is pretty low, too, isn't it? Yeah, she, I think she's also a 10 or 11, yeah. something like that. Um, so shadows would be a real potential danger. Yeah. Um, they have several sources of daylight. They're getting a long rest, so the drift globe is in play again. Caduceus seems to have that perpetually prepared now. Yeah. Uh, just like when they were out on the water, he had... Um, Didn't draw water. Yeah. So I think he's like, we're going in the darkness, and the beings out here are sensitive to light. I had daylight in my pocket every day. Yeah. Um, so that may or may not save them, in the sense that it might banish the shadows or the shadow demons. Mm -hmm. uh, we have yet to see a dragon, so a shadow dragon. Well, it's oh, no, we had no, we had we did have a blue dragon yeah. in the Happy Fun Time world. That's right. But in in storyline quests, <laughs> we have not had we have not had a main quest line dragon. Yes, only side quest dragons. <laughs> yes, uh, which are arguably weaker dragons. Yes. 
so we could see that too. I don't think it'll be a dragon though. I think it's more likely to be the shadow demon or yeah. shadows. Uh, shadows would be more in keeping with the undead nature of things or the spectral nature of things. Um, Can but, a shadow dragon shapeshift at all? No, not that I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, were you just thinking about that for Oban? Yeah. It's like, what if Oban's the shadow dragon? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the name I would give a shadow dragon. Now that you mentioned that, <laughs> yeah, that would, that would fit. I would do that. <laughs> hmm. Uh, so the the bridge of chains also I think is significant in what we've been discussing with the chain oblivion and the Tarask. Yes. And that we think that this might be the holding place yes. for the Tarask. And the angel of you know. Angel of Irons. Mm -hmm. Um which um, we still have not gotten any more information and on. Even Ashley's visions of her being breaking the chains. Yeah. Um, I feel like the bridge is not the way across. Oh. I feel like the bridge is the trap designed to make noise and trigger that, and that there's a hidden way across. Interesting. That won't make the noise. Matt did seem to indicate that the yes, pit he. was not deep. Yes. Hmm. That's my thought. I hadn't considered that, but yeah. I don't know. We have yet to see anything in the construction of this, though, that would indicate that that would be uh, in the design plan, as it were. Yeah. There haven't been many obvious traps or anything. My my thought was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Leap of Faith. Yeah, I thought of that too. There's the, the, only the, the penitent chamber. man shall pass. They did that. Yeah. They had to kneel down below the adamantine door. Uh, yeah. That that's that's where my mind went. If I'm right or wrong, we'll find out next week or in a two days. Um, uh, let's see, the penitent man was the he had to duck beneath the blades. Mm -hmm. What was the next one? Was it uh, the spelling out? Ah, the name of God. Yes. Which, I mean, no one tried to stay the Storm Lord's name at that pillar. It's true. Um, yeah. So maybe, I mean. Yeah. But, you know, that so final yeah, one with faith, faith, yeah. invisible bridge right there. Where they can cross without making noise versus taking the easy bridge. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call that my wild speculation. I think that's what it's going to be. All right. So, one of the things that I think we both were contemplating in this episode, mm -hmm. which is uh, Oban. We mentioned it earlier. Yes. Earlier. I believe that uh, we will find when they get past the bridge and everything, Oban will come up behind them because they'll have cleared the way for him. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably true. Um, I think... Because I was trying to think, what evidence have we seen that he has passed? Yeah. And arguably the only evidence that we've seen was the placing of the seal to open the tomb. Mm -hmm. 
and if memory serves, not did see evidence of someone crawling beneath that door. Yeah. But we've just seen that evidence of other people coming in here yeah. or being in here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I honestly think he came, he opened the seal, waited for them to go in, and then followed because he knew he couldn't clear it. Yeah. Uh, and that would be. And that's a classic bad guy thing. Yeah. Especially if Yasha is important to him mm -hmm. and her getting to where he needs her is what needs to happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we're going to get answers this week uh, to a lot of this. Yeah. But we will see you guys next week. Uh, take care of yourselves anytime.